Hey guys, it's David and welcome back to Scalehanger 182. In today's video I'm going to paint my first large scale figure, the Elder Predator. But first, the word from today's video sponsor. The creators of Gunship Battle Total Warfare Studio, Joy City. A new entry to the franchise just arrived and this time is more focused on naval combat. In Gunship Battle Crypto Conflict, you are an admiral tasked with building and maintaining naval bases, while producing and commanding land, sea and air units, researching and forging alliances for co-op battles. New in-game resource, Titanium, can be acquired by doing various activities and then exchanged into utility coin called Milico. Join our forces as an admiral and strategize battles. Take part in World War cross server tournaments. Download Gunship Battle Crypto Conflict from the link in description and I'll see you soon on the battlefield. Now let's get back to painting my figure. The STL5 for this beautiful looking Predator statue, along with many other beautiful 3D models, you can find on Gamebody website. For printing this figure, I decided to use Elagu Mars 2 Pro 3D printer with Elagu Grey Resin. This is my second 3D printer, it's very affordable and I was really excited to see what this one is capable of. So after setting up the printer, printing some test prints and changing a few settings, I decided not to waste any more time and print one of the largest parts first, the head and torso. That was a success print and the details look just amazing. Now the last part I printed was that huge base and for some reason it printed with some nasty line that goes over all cool details. I'm not sure what happened, maybe someone bumped into the printer accidentally. I don't know, but I was able to sand it down without losing any details. Now, I'm not a figure painter and I'm actually a super noob, so we will not find any fancy techniques in this video used by figure painters, but I am going to use some simple painting and weathering techniques I used on my scale models with a little help of Citadel contrast paints that I never used before and totally new Hataka violet paint sets dedicated for figure painting. The plan was simple, pick up the brush and airbrush and just dive in and have fun painting. I actually should have left the sword probably until I finish painting because I broke it like three times. Next step was to grab my Proconboy 266 airbrush. It's great for priming and varnishing models and sprayed the model with my favorite primer, Mr. Surfacer, thinned down with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I also done a zenithal highlight by spraying Mr. Surfacer white from above. This is pretty cool technique to bring up the highlights when painting with super thin layers later on. For some reason I also missed the huge gap before painting and a few other ones, so it's now time to fix it with using a Tamiya epoxy putty. Wait a few hours, sand it and do a little repaint job. For the first base coats I used airbrush and my all lacquer based paints from Hataka Orange line. I started spraying thin coats on the skin while covering a little more where the shadow is. Thank you. 
Next, I added just sand 7k to almost empty but dirty tray, mixed it with thinner and I worked more on the highlights. With desert beige now, I started to work even more careful on the strongest highlights. Predators have a dark patches on their skin, to imitate that I choose Hataka C230 dark grey, but later all the colors will change when I start playing with Citadel contrast paints. Alright, time for brush painting and to test these new Hataka violet paints for figure painting. Always gets me a little nervous as I don't brush paint a lot except for small details on the models. But as I mentioned before, I'm not going to worry too much, gonna try my best and have fun. Ok, after a little bit of painting, I really like these new Hataka paints a lot. The consistency of this is really nice and managed not to leave any brush strokes. Hataka blue line for brush painting is pretty good, but this coverage here is really good. Ok, now I need some metallic paints to paint the armor bits and I'm gonna help myself with gunmetal from Hataka blue range. With all these teeth and bone trophies, I think I should have ease up a little and probably apply a few thin coats rather than go thick as I did. But I'm not gonna bother too much, lesson learned.
for the hair ornaments I'm using Citadel Auric Armor Gold. And the same gold color is going on the pistol ornament. Here I just wipe the paint off so only a little left on the side of the brush and gently stroke the brush against the raised detail, leaving the paint only there. Now it's time to use the famous Citadel contrast paints. These paints are a lot of fun. The idea is to make a color, shading and highlights all in one step. So when you have the right contrast color, you don't really need to be an experienced figure painter to do some pretty decent job. And I suggest to look up for more videos about them here on YouTube. I didn't really like the bright brown on the belt, so I decided to use another contrast color to darken it up. And this is another cool contrast paint. This one really was spot on on what I really wanted this armor to look like. Very old and weathered. Now it's time to use some washes and catch all these deep recesses and give them some strong shadows. Ok, here I went a little too deep and decided to change the skin tone. I don't know why I grabbed this green contrast paint, perhaps I wasn't aware of how green this is. I mean, look how really cool these contrast paints work, but I really didn't want to make a Shrek from the Predator. But hey, I have more of these contrast paints to play with, but now it's very possible to go really wrong. Time to do some dry brushing. Get some paint on the brush, wipe off the excess paint so almost none is left and highlight only the edges of the raised detail. Ok, it's time to change that skin color for the last time. I'm gonna use Citadel Guili Man Flesh and this is really gonna go now one way or another. I think it looks better now but a little bit too shiny. So my next step is to spray VMS Satin Varnish on everything except the armor. I want it to be a shinier and stand out more. I finally decided on how I want this base to look and this huge middle bit I want it to look like a rough stone. I'm gonna use another scale modeling technique and use Mr. Surfacer 500 to mold the brush and create a nice rough texture, just like we do with some tank models. 
Next, Mr. Surfacer 1500 Grey. And a little work that I've done off the camera later was just to fix that gold color and paint thin bottom part of that base gold as well. I am creating some more deep shadows with a Mick Brown oil brusher. By applying the oils first and a few minutes later I will blend it with a tiny bit of enamel thinner on the brush. To make all these beautiful gold details pronounced, I am using a more modern US military vehicles wash. It's a very nice dark brown color and I am not going to wipe off the excess here as I want it to have this uh, little dirty and weathered look. And another ammo wash dark sea grey I used on the grey stone parts. This time I will clean the excess with ammo and amyl thinner. Lastly, you can make your own wash or weathering product with a use of Tamiya enamel paints and Tamiya enamel thinner. Note that these are really hard to get here in UK, but please wait just a minute till the end of that video and I'll explain where to get them for a very cheap price. Alright, that's it I think I've done here and just finished my first large scale statue. I had a lot of fun painting this one and I think I do want to paint more figures in the future and learn something new. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this paint job. Now, I have been shopping with many online scale model shops in the past, but last year I really started to like Super Hobby. This is a huge scale model shop with a lot of products in stock where I found everything I was looking for, like Tamiya enamel paints I mentioned before, Amor P, Alclads, Mr. Hobby or Hataka. All in one place and from now on you can support the channel by shopping at Super Hobby thanks to our partner program. Just use the link in the description below that video and every time you shop at Super Hobby a small amount goes to cover my next shopping so I will really appreciate your help. Also don't forget to use scalehanger182 promo code at the checkout to receive a small discount. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Peace.